New generating stations are being built. Giant interprovincial projects negotiated. Demand for electricity is up on average 5% a year for the past 50 years. Imagination and innovation are key. It's 1987, at the crossroads, a place called Longwood. Longwood is the, is the keystone at the western end of our 500 kV system. Jim Bain, a senior engineer in systems planning, was crunching numbers on Longwood seven years before the site was confirmed. Longwood is doing two functions. It's getting the power out of Bruce, and it's getting the power in to this part of southwestern Ontario. Bain's team identify options presented to hydro, government, and public, calculate cause and effect, systematically zeroing in on the preferred site. Even at this stage, the cost is staggering. We're talking in the order of $50 million of paper studies, uh, computer studies, man hours before a shovel ever goes into the ground. Design and drafting is part of that cost. 2,500 drawings are needed for Longwood. Computers help get them drawn in 18 months. The same computers are invaluable when change is called for. Well, system planning, who uh, uh, determine what is required at the station, decided at uh, a point in time that they needed a fifth auto transformer, and we were going with four. What could have taken weeks redrawing took only hours with CAD. Layering, simulating each layer of construction, is another useful tool a computer provides. You could have a concrete layer where it shows all the concrete footings. The next layer would have all the steel. The layer above that would have insulators. Another layer above that would have uh, a bus work and equipment and so on. So by turning on or off layers, you can see specific uh, uh, items that you want to see. Between 1976 and 87, Ontario Hydro put Bruce nuclear power development on stream, a potential 6,400 megawatts, one-third of the province's needs, hobbled for lack of lines out. A 1981 Royal Commission used uncommonly strong... The first meter, meter and a half was a, a sandy loam substance which had no load-bearing capability at all. With pockets as deep as three meters. The 140,000 cubic meters to be replaced. Enough earth to fill Toronto's sky dome to a depth of 20 meters. In fact, no earth left the site, put aside to be used later for landscaping. From midsummer into the mild winter of year one, 55 tandem trucks, each making 10 trips a day, worked at replacing earth with granular fill, on reshaping the site into a level beginning for one of North America's most modern remote-controlled transformer complexes. Then came the first costly surprise. So we went from a, a grading contract that we thought would cost around $5 million to $13 million. But by adjusting schedules and priorities, both overall cost and the construction timetable stayed on track. On the south side of the site, a scrub woodlot was cleared for two sets of power lines to be brought in. And a right of way cut through. Public input is important to Hydro on every major project. Meetings are held, local information centers set up to maintain ongoing presence for Hydro in the community. 
Local politicians are involved at an early stage. They've been very cooperative, I must say, because uh, every time, and they made a report every other month, they came in and reported on the progress of the, of the line. And uh, they would also leave with, with the uh, statement that if there's any problems or if there's anything we, you want us to do, let us know. No major construction can begin in Ontario without archaeological survey. There's a new awareness of heritage. It was known that long before Confederation, bands of Iroquois hunted around Longwood. What if Hydro's site contained valuable evidence? Archaeologist Robert Peel was asked to find out. This site seems to be a campsite that may date as old as about a thousand years ago. And um, uh, during the late woodland period, the pottery and the projectile points and other uh, tools suggest that. Hydro is currently examining four major locations around southern Ontario. Here at Longwood, Peel and his group found 34 sites with a variety of artifacts. First survey discovered a scattering of uh, chipstone tools, uh, flakes, and some pottery that uh, told us this was a prehistoric site and not a historic site. A selection of Longwood artifacts are scheduled for permanent exhibition at Hydro headquarters. The remainder will probably be offered to a museum. In the beginning, it's mostly footings, 2,400 of them to support a forest of towers beams, breakers, and the like. Southwest Ontario is good, but mostly flat farmland, exposed to extremes of weather. Frost goes as deep as a meter. Particular attention is given to footings. Stage one, drills bore down three meters, creating a meter diameter hole in which concrete is poured direct to earth. Before setting, a rod cage reinforcement is lowered to platform level. Stage two, construction of a square box form a meter deep to cap off the column. Its smooth sides reaching down below the frost line ensure any winter heaving slides over the sides, not jeopardizing the structure above. Of course, we say we only need one, the line and one breaker actually installed, but You'd Monthly site on. meetings are an important opportunity for engineers and construction crews to iron out wrinkles, dovetail effort. The jigsaw gets more complex by the day. I'm wondering what the status of the uh, relocation of the drain, of the government drain is, Bob. At this moment we're at 40% completion of the drain. The diversion through the site is complete, uh, excavation is complete, uh, riprap is now at about 10%. The drainage act requires legal compliance. The government drain on the original site worked well for local farmers, but the new Longwood site is higher than the original ground, now fully tiled and meant to drain fast. At significant cost, engineers designed a completely new system, skirting the site with filter fabric lining and riprap over top. It ends in a new holding pond which regulates flow, particularly at spring runoff a commitment to Caradoc Township. Twelve months in, footings are being topped with towers and equipment. Longwood is landscaped to be as unobtrusive as is practical. Overburdened became these berms planted with shrubs and trees. The station is also a more aesthetic design. Towers and beams designated low profile, solid bus bars. It's uh, 44,000 feet of 8 and 12 inch of bus in here and, and uh, that's about eight and a half miles so the, there's a terrific amount. Sam Dougherty, 20-year veteran site foreman, has his crews use a jury-rigged form to assemble and weld A-frames on the ground, then hoist them into place. A-frame assembly proceeds summer and winter. Dougherty's innovative techniques enhance productivity and safety. This way, when we, build, when we build them on the jig, 
eight, everyone fits. We only have one bad one out of all the, the setup. And uh, this seems to be the way to do it that makes sense. Making sense is what it's all about on a project this size. Getting interrelated activities to gel, the challenge. Longwood's breaking new ground. Bruce to Longwood is 188 kilometers. Two 500 kilovolt circuits strung along 700 towers make a connection that can deliver 20 times the load of a single 230 kV line. Cost to the system, $250 million. On this job, we offer each and every owner a $5,000 cash bonus if they'll give us the right to start preliminary engineering, which includes soil testing and surveying, prior to actually obtaining the legal right to enter the property. Leaving Longwood by the back door to Nanticoke, 160 kilometers, another unique feature. 600 towers, approximately half or 500 kilovolt circuit on one side, to 230 kV on the other. Add another quarter billion to the tab. A third connection goes west out of Longwood. Four 230 kV circuits tying into Lambton-Buchanan lines. At the heart of the project are the transformers and companion reactors, a major engineering challenge of their own. Orders for nine, five of them for Longwood, were placed by Hydro about the time work began on the project, the same time industrial mergers and disputes began to take effect. Original manufacturers Westinghouse and GE merged to become TTI, opening a new facility in Guelph, Ontario. They in turn were bought out by Swedish giant Asea Brown Boveri. Eighteen months in, another unwelcome surprise. Jim, we've got a, another failure of the 750s at TTI. We can't delay the in-service date, George. It's going to cost us a fortune in locked-in energy. Well, will operations allow us to go in with two? Yeah. Because yep. we need a one. With four major projects, Gregory is able to shuffle priorities. Also, for the first time in 20 years, Hydro go offshore to Scotland to order three transformers. Getting them to Longwood is a job for the railroad. A private spur line is built off the Windsor-London main line. A year from now, Hydro's own Schnabel flatbed will pass by with the first transformer. By the second summer, the 230 kV yard is almost complete and on schedule. Work on the 500 kV yard is well ahead. With relay buildings up, wiring begins. Each of 12 consoles contains 174 cables. It takes two weeks to terminate a complete set. They're connected via microprocessor to regional control at Buchanan. When fully installed, everything down to room temperature is monitored from there. Microwave line of sight makes the connection to Buchanan and digital acquisition systems at Clarkson. On the circuit W42L, we've got 200 megs coming in. In the subdued Longwood. light of Buchanan control, MX engineers Longwood. monitor the flow of electricity along a complex and web of power corridors reaching across the southwest and into the United States. Yeah, that load must be all coming down W42. Buchanan's up against the main Windsor-Montreal highway on the south side of London. In Hydro's scheme, it's key to the Buchanan input interface, an imaginary line enclosing southwest Ontario, an area consuming 10% of the province's electricity. It's fall 89, second anniversary of the project. First of five reactors waits to be placed on its pad in the 500 kV yard. A hundred tons, not to be taken lightly. For the final 100 meters, it's transferred from rail car to 96-wheel flatbed, a delicate operation with such a massive load. With full weight taken by the hoist, alarms go off. The cradle can't handle it. Anxious moments. Engineers recalculate. 
It's a matter of load distribution. With cradle realigned, the lift continues. Everything about the move is meticulously planned, a slow procession. Operators steering from back and front of the conveyor, communicating by radio. Nothing left to chance. Let me know when it's getting close. Almost there, months of design and construction come down to minutes and centimeters. It'll rest on these giant springs, anchored only by its own weight. Positioning is critical. Almost, but not quite. It's down to less than a centimeter out of line, but it must be true. Ratchets and chains help balance most of the weight swinging from the jib. Then it's a job for raw muscle. Everyone takes the strain. Right on. Later, engineers fill the reactor with oil, doubling its dry weight. Home for the next half century. The final year of construction. As March comes to a close, early on a fine spring morning, an event to warm the heart of the project engineer. The first of five giant transformers makes the 110 kilometer journey from Guelph, Ontario, where it's made, to Longwood to become a vital link in ensuring North America's power supply. They call this a schnappel, loosely translated from the German it means beak of the bird, that holds the 350 ton transformer suspended front and back. CP rail is allocated eight hours. By four o'clock, the caravan must be clear of the main line and on the new spur. Timing is everything. At mile 69, the lip on a bridge poses a problem. The transformer must be raised 20 centimeters. This Schnabel rig was custom built for Ontario Hydro, one of only two in North America. It's self-contained with built-in auxiliary generators. Engineers communicating by radio can slowly raise or lower this load with powerful hydraulics, enough to clear most obstructions. In 15 minutes, it's clear. They're on their way again. Off the main line and onto the new spur, only 500 meters to go. It's the first time such weight has passed this way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. slow down. Stop. In the morning, the same crew that unloaded the first reactor face an even bigger challenge. First, lower the humongous bulk onto four seemingly tiny sets of rollers, yet each surprisingly capable of supporting 200 tons. Okay, he says. Coming down, boys. One on a hole? Yep. Oh, that's beautiful. Safely on the rollers, giant lugs and pins are quickly removed, leaving the transformer free standing, and the two ends of the schnabel free to be joined up once its cargo is rolled out of the way. A simple lever is all it takes for the crew to move the 60-ton rig clear. Most time is taken lining up the transformer for its short last journey. Okay, here. 
Snatch blocks are rigged to create a purchase capable of moving it. The winch takes the strain. The last 15 meters will be the slowest. Centimeter by centimeter, transformer number one approaches its pad. Two hours later, it's all done. One down, four to go. Less than six months to completion. The 230 kV yard is now live. Protection and control, PNC engineers, are in the final stages of testing and retesting every circuit. Ed Koenig heads up the PNC team. Well, the basic transformer is still the same as it always was. It's just the uh, control panels that you're looking at now would be significantly different than uh, control panels years ago. We now have all digital readout type meters where we used to have dial type meters that were huge meters about yay big. Now we have these small digital readouts for, for the operators. There's uh, about 10 computer systems in, in this station. There's five in this building and five in the other building, which monitor the operation of all the relaying here. There's uh, another computer system at Buchanan with a remote terminal unit here. They can operate all the equipment here from Buchanan, and all the alarms from here are printed out at Buchanan. Attention to the minutest detail is vital. When P and C finally confirm all circuits ready, one of North America's largest transformer complexes will be virtually deserted, operated by remote control 40 kilometers away at Buchanan. Meanwhile, back at Toronto, in the shadow of the world's tallest building, Project Arabia is docked, ready to discharge transformer number four destined for Longwood. This one crossed the Atlantic from Scotland in less than 10 days. Not all plain sailing, as the captain recalls. 10, 15 meter high waves, 10 meter, it's, and uh, Okay, it takes one and a half day, you cannot sleep, just watch that thing <laughs> get don't hit you very hard. I had two, I have three frames broken there, bent. Four wire hawsers are attached to the corners. A giant steel hatch cover swung out harbor side acts as counterbalance. One last chore before the hoist begins. Hydro engineers check critical dew point inside the transformer. After two hours, laborious meter by meter, Adjusting further counterbalance with water and ballast tanks, transformer number four is poised to settle between the schnabel that'll take it down the CP line to Longwood. You said it's still one degree? One degree. Positioning is still everything. A centimeter out of line is too much. But with muscle power and a little bit of luck from a hydraulic truck, the transformer is laid to rest. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 too much in now. Okay, push. 
It's been a long haul, three years of construction for a project more than 15 years in the making. Each reactor now has its own acoustic housing to eliminate the nuisance of constant hum. Three years ago, this was the remains of a primeval swamp. Longwood today is a unique example of power distribution technology. Ontario Hydro is part of a complex North American power grid. With Longwood open, Machine mode instability that's plagued the system for years is much less a concern. That's correct. Giant breakers close. Millions of dollars, thousands of work hours, and many skills come down to this one moment. Almost an anti-climax as operation staff prepare to take the 500 kV yard live to take power from Bruce and put it into the grid. As new as Longwood is Hydro's state-of-the-art central control at Clarkson. Here, where final decisions are made for the entire province, where the brokering, buying and selling of power with neighbors in other provinces and the United States is negotiated, the surge of power from Longwood is a welcome addition. Longwood is a key link in the distribution system for several million consumers in Ontario and the northeastern United States. Longwood, truly at the crossroads of the 21st century.